Hey folks, welcome back to our videos, or if you're just starting or just joining us, glad you're joining us. In this video, we're going to talk about updating the website name. So let's take a look at our demonstration website, and I'll show you what we'll be updating. There we go, I'm just going to pull that into view, and this is the website name here. Your particular product may actually have the name of the template versus the words website name, but this is the text that we'll be updating. It's spiderable text, so good for search engines. Also very simple and easy to update, and you don't need a graphic editor. Your particular template may or may not include some sort of a demo or default graphic logo, but for the website name, you just need a simple page, some text, update it, and you're good. So let's jump into Dreamweaver, and I'll show you how to do that. In Dreamweaver, expand your library folder, your shared folder, and open up the website name LBI file. Really, it's just a matter of selecting the text, for zoo website and typing in a new name. Once you've typed in the name, it's important that the text on the page is formatted under the H3 tag or the H3 heading tag. If for whatever reason it gets detached from that particular formatting and it looks just like regular old boring text on the page, just select it one more time, go down to the format menu in the properties panel and reapply the heading 3. This will help with search engine optimization and search engine rankings for anybody looking for the name used in your website. We're just going to save this. We're going to preview it in our page. And then I'm going to show you a couple of advanced things such as what happens when you have a very long website name and it doesn't fit into your page. Or how do you reposition it? I'm going to show you how to modify the styles for your website name. Because typically this is one of the components that regardless of your experience level, Oftentimes you will need to make a few adjustments in order to make it fit into your page and really make your page shine. So let's uh, save the update to start with. We'll let this run through and update all the pages in our site. We'll take a quick preview and then we'll take a look at making some advanced updates. There we go. Our page has finished updating. We'll close that down. We'll go back and visit our page. Hit the refresh button and see it take change right away. Fantastic. Now, there are situations where folks will want to use many words with many characters for their website name. I'm going to show you an example of how to do that and then manipulate the style sheet to change the size and the positioning so that it still fits within your page. Let's jump back to Dreamweaver. I'm just going to update my website name so that it has a whole bunch of information. Okay, I've made a very exaggerated uh, website name here. The Fraternal Order of the Golf Enthusiast uh, for Zoo Chapter. It's a bit of a mouthful, so if I don't say it right, please forgive me. But let's take a look at it in a web page. This is sort of the thing that I'm getting at. You'll have text that just doesn't fit. Now, ordinarily, I would suggest you just use fewer words. Try and get it down to be something a little bit more reasonable. Uh, but if you have to have a great big uh, title, for your website name, there are things you can do. And let's start with the style sheet in Dreamweaver to see what we can do to make this fit. Basically, we want it to fit at least all on one line. And I would say that we don't want it to be wider than, oh, 900 pixels. The reason being is we want it to fit nicely into uh, our tablets and our mobile devices. Let's go back to Dreamweaver, close that down. And we're going to, this time, go into the site styles, styles.css. We're going to scroll down until we can find the styles for the website. Now, here is the website name. This is the positioning for the website name. In this particular instance, let's say, for example, we did need to keep the logo here. And we need the text to start where it starts, but we need it to end sooner basically to not be as long so let's just as assume that this is a situation because that's a fairly uh, standard thing to happen we have a, a logo and we have text we want it to fit all on the page but it just doesn't so we'll continue scrolling down and we'll actually look for the style for the website name right now we're probably about halfway down the page and this is where the styling starts for the different components in the header of your page you'll see that there's website name starting here then we have tagline then we have telephone etc and the styles all the styles for that particular component 
aside from the positioning will be located in this one area right here. In this case, there's a couple of variables or things we can start changing right away. The number one thing is the font size. We can change this from a 60px. Let's just cut it down to about you know, two thirds and make it 40px. Okay, we'll just uh, save our styles.css. We'll jump right back to our on our demo page and refresh it. Boom, there it is, the Fortunal. Actually, that worked out pretty well. We want to make sure that the text doesn't go past maybe the, the image as a good uh, rule of thumb um, in order to make sure that it fits nicely into our sort of laptop and, and uh, tablet uh, devices. But um, in terms of height and positioning now, we could probably get into um, moving it up and down a little bit back to our styles.css. We could scroll right up, find the website name, and now we have the top and the left position. Uh, maybe we want it moved uh, what's further from the top of the page so it's closer to our tagline. We could do that simply by changing the top position. It's 25 pixels from the top. Let's make it 50 pixels from the top. We'll save it. Refresh. Almost right. I'd say we certainly don't want it encroaching on the home link over here, so we'll bump it up a few more pixels. And you'll get the idea from what I'm doing here that you can change the position of the component, the website name, and you can change the size of it as well so that it fits nicely into your page. Now there's another thing you can do with the website name. The font itself has a big impact on how wide or how much room the uh, particular component or the text will take up on the page. In this example, we use a, a font that's actually fairly tight-knit. It, it doesn't take up a lot of uh, room, so we can fit quite a few characters in here, but there are fonts that are a lot wider. And what you could do is maybe just change the font type, try different font types to see what happens. Let me just show you the effect of that by going back down to the website name. We use something from Google called Dosis. Well, let's change this to something else just so I can show you an example. We're going to backspace that out, hold the shift and the colon key, and we're going to load something else in here that is a, a, a much different font. We'll use the impact font, see if that uh, works out for us. Well, the save, go back. Well, that wasn't a great example because the impact font takes up about the same amount of width, so let's just try that one more time. And as you can see, one of my cheating methods, if I just want to quickly test something, is I just sort of backspace my cursor up to the, right where the end of the property is, where it says font-family, so it's blinking right at the edge of the Y. Then I hold the shift colon key on my keyboard and it activates my tool here where I can pick up different uh, font types. And these font families here are typical for most computers. So if you select something of the list, typically it will be on or available on the user's computer. So let's try this one right here. This is a, a, a serif font, so we'll save that. There, you can see by changing to a serif font that it pushes the text way out again. So you can see by using different font types that it will have an impact on how much room is being used to display that particular website name. So that's something you can manipulate as well, especially if you're already using a very wide font. You can use a, a narrower font simply by changing different font types and experimenting to see with what fits best.